Welcome on into the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it is time to look at the top 10 fantasy busts that I have. Actually, it's going to be the top uh, 9 busts that I have at the tight end position for the 2024 fantasy football season. If you did not catch it earlier this week, let out my uh, my tiered rankings video. You can catch the rankings up on the website at www.theffforge.com if you want to see the specific rankings uh, positions of each player. You can also catch my sleepers video, which was released on Wednesday, and last week did all the same stuff for the wide receiver position, so check that on out. Uh, the algorithm has forgotten about me after I disappeared for a month, so uh, videos are struggling to, to get the reach out there as I it'll get better as we go it's also just June right now but uh, th that's part of the reason to remember things will will change but overall uh, at least you're gonna be getting some viewpoints here from me on some uh, some relevant tight ends here at least for the most part some of these guys maybe you're not drafting anyone uh, anyways and remember there are deeper leagues out there and uh, tight end premium types of leagues too where uh, hey there's a premium on the position so Without further ado, um, let's run the, the intro thing. I keep forgetting to set that up. And that's going to bring us on to my number nine bust uh, candidate here is is my tight end 39 who i have ranked nine spots lower than the ecr ecr in him is tight end 30 expert consensus ranking by the way from fantasy pros website um i'd have been more optimistic for gerald Ever everett referencing the fact that shane waldron has used to 12 personnel a lot but they drafted roma dunze with the ninth pick um by the way he's gonna be the tight end number two in uh with chicago so, uh, yeah, I, I, I would have liked him a little bit more if they, did, they didn't draft Roma Dunes. They would have been a little more optimistic. But because of that, I'm just, I, I don't see it at all, uh, not even at a rate of tight end 30. But most leagues, you're probably not drafting all the way up to tight end 30 anyways. Uh, that being said, I just in case you, you're thinking about it, I, I really wouldn't bother put him as a, a backup tight end anyways. He's going to have a rookie you know, quarterback throwing to him too. So there's just too many things that need to go right for him to pay off. Then we got my number eight tight end in Michael Mayer, who I've ranked 36th overall uh, for the tight end position. Of course, the experts have him ranked 28th overall. So this is, might get into draft territory here. The Raiders drafted a big slot tight end in Brock Bowers. Yes, he'll probably be the number two tight end in a sense, but he'll also be the tight end who's catching uh, the most passes. I do expect that Michael Mayer will improve upon last season, but I don't expect his target share to go up by much. And on top of that, you know, I'm not really expecting this offense to be fantastic, especially for the receivers within it. We've got the number, you know, four maybe receiving option on this offense in Michael Mayer. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of pass on that. I think there's enough other options that we can we can uh, think about going. That's going to bring us on to my tight end at number seven bust here in Ben Sinat. I have him 10 spots lower than ECR. I am at uh, ranked 35th overall. ECR is tight end 25. And I'll tell you what, for Ben Sinat, I don't want to be the low man on him. I, I loved him. Uh, not loved Liked him quite a bit in the draft process, more than others. Uh, he got taken even a little bit higher than that. But, you know, you go look at my sleepers list. Zach Ertz is on there for a reason. I do expect him to be the starter ahead of Ben Sinat. Uh, ben Sinat himself, a rookie tight end. He got, you know, third round tight end. Uh, pick on top of that, which, whatever. But also, you're going to have a rookie throwing to him, a rookie who we don't know how much he's going to throw down the middle of the field, especially where tight ends usually get a lot of their work anyways. Zach Ertz working ahead of him. I just There's a lot of other options. I'm really surprised that Ben Sinat's uh, tight end 25 currently in the rankings. It's, it's a bit of a stretch for me. And really, when it comes to currently, he's like the fifth best receiving option on this offense. So we hear some different news about him winning the starting job or something. I'll, I'll, I'll take a totally different tone on this. But until then, uh, no thank you. That's going to bring us on to my tight end uh, number six on here, Chico Zium Okonkwo, who I've ranked uh, 31st. Oh, let me get him up here. I'm ranked 31st. There you go. 10 spots higher than the ECR. So ECR in him is uh, tight end 21. They're starting to get into this draftable range, depending on your league and 
I know there's some people that draft three tight ends in uh, some of my leagues that I've been in every year. Or so, uh, yeah, it, we're in that range. He's another player that I do love, really like Chico Conquo, liked him coming out, uh, still like him, but he has yet to break out. Going to be entering, I believe, year four for him. He'll be competing with both running backs for targets, regardless of who's on the field. So it's not like there's a bruising running back, a Derrick Henry type of guy who's uh, going to take up a lot of the carries and not really get many targets. Both Tony Pollard and Ty J Spears are good out of the backfield and should eat into some of this tight end type of uh, target share. When it comes down to it, there's just other risks that I would rather take. I will look to move him up from the tight end 31, get him higher in my rankings, but you know, I'm going to need to uh, really make the argument for that to happen each and every time that he does move up. So, yeah, he, he's a possible guy who will move up from here, but how much? You know, maybe not a whole lot. 26 might be the, the sky's the limit or something like that. I don't know exactly the number. Let's bring us on to my number five tight end bust. Uh, Juwan Johnson, I have him nine spots lower than the ECR. ECR on him must be uh, tight end. Keep doing that. <laughs> tight end 20. Maybe I should just go with receiver. Uh, so I was low on him last year and I will be again and it, this really hasn't hurt me I don't really understand or see the upside with him I don't know why the EV tight end 31 from last year would go as high as the tight end 20 this year without some reason to believe that this uh, Undrafted receiver turned tight end will suddenly break out in his fifth year in the league What reason is there? What has changed with the situation? To me, this is going to be a total, complete waste of a pick if you take this guy in your draft really strongly. Not suggesting it. Uh, you know, I just don't see it. That's going to bring us on to my tight end 28 in Hunter Henry. I have 10 spots higher than the ECR. The ECR in him is tight end 18. And uh, not going to take a whole lot of a different tone here with Hunter Henry than I just did with Juwan Johnson. But I do understand, you know, the rookie motif of a rookie throwing to him. But, uh, well... You know, we're going to have two different quarterbacks potentially throwing to him. So while Jacoby Brissett's throwing to Hunter Henry, if that is the case, uh, things might look decent for him early on in the season. Still not expecting it to be consistent uh, as it hasn't been for a long time for Hunter Henry. But uh, when he, when um, Drake May comes in, sometimes the argument is that rookies tend to rely on their tight ends, use them as a safety blanket, blah, blah, blah. Drake May is not really that. That's kind of like the same concerns that I have with Jaden Daniels for Zach Ertz, etc. Um, except he he was more willing to throw over the middle of the field, at least for Drake May, in Drake May's case. But still, I don't think that he's gonna overly rely and just like pepper his target with like twelve to, uh, his tight end with like twelve targets a game, like some guys do. I do expect him to take some risks, get the ball down the field, and not uh, just use that that guy as a crutch as we bring us on to my tight end number three uh who uh, bust tight end number three here my 25th ranked tight end six spots lower on him than the experts are expert tight end number 19 kadon is my boy so look i love him another guy who i'm not like looking to be low on these guys i don't dislike the player themselves and i'm also not going to sit here and campaign against drafting him like i did especially for juan johnson there but he finished last year uh, as the EV tight end 29. Once again, equalized value. And there's just other situations that I think have more upside that I'd rather take a shot on. There's a few backup tight ends even that I would just rather take a shot on. But I do understand with Kate on why you might draft him as high as tight end 19 or, or in that area. I do get it, at least. But with Rashad White still there, I, uh, I just... I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't th foresee things changing a whole lot from last year. But hopefully, I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong on that and see an absolute breakout for Kate on this. Bring us on to my number two bust tight end in T.J. Hawkinson, who I am seven spots lower on than the ECR. I have him at my tight end 19. ECR is tight end 12. I don't understand spending a top drafting T.J. Hawkinson as a number one tight end. There's no way he finishes the season as the number one tight end, but. I, I could understand this if he was had you know Kirk Cousins throwing to him when he comes back. He's going to be missing half of the season is really the true expectation at this point in time. If that changes, I'll change my tune in one way or the other. Maybe I get worse on him if, if all of a sudden he has some complications going on. But I really don't understand this ECR. 
when he comes back, he's going to have a raw rookie at the helm who's, you know, going to be the guy throwing to him. To me, like I said, this ranking feels like as if you were expecting Kirk Cousins to be coming back, and even then, it might be a little bit rich. All that said, he's highly talented. I do think that he should get drafted and and stashed on a roster, even though you're not going to be able to utilize him, and he might take up a roster spot for... Well, no, he shouldn't. He should be able to, uh, you know, and think about that. You should be able to probably, I uh, believe, in some leagues at least, put him into um, an IR spot if you have that. So that would make him a little bit more draftable as well in those types of leagues. But just speaking generically here, especially if he's going to be taking up a spot on your roster, um, be cautious about drafting him too highly. That, that's all, you know, I, I just wouldn't make it a plan of mine to draft him uh in most strategies at least so bring us on to my tight end uh 14 my number one tight end bust uh this season because of how highly he's ranked and and um he's ranked by, by the experts five spots lower than that tight end f- number nine and the breakout of david njoku last season was absolutely fantastic and you know initially coming off of last season it's like oh my god how, how highly am i gonna have david njoku in my rankings and I wanted to put him as high as I could. I really like David Njoku, but uh, the thing is, is you sit back and you look at it and a whole lot of that breakout is directly correlated to Joe Flacco being that quarterback. So I am expecting some regression from him last year. He finished as the EV tight end number nine, expecting him, like I said, to regress a little bit from that. I hope I'm wrong. I, I really do with David Njoku, but I feel much more comfortable just taking him a little bit further back than where he's going in drafts currently. And that is it for my top 10 tight end busts. I think this list is a little more exciting than the uh, sleepers video. So hopefully you you caught this video. And let's finish this video off just letting you know a couple things about the channel real quick. Listeners League. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so. If you become a channel member, you will get a password to my a Discord for the twenty uh, the the Fantasy Football Forge channel here, um, and on there are the channel the uh, hashtag twenty twenty four Fantasy League exclamation point. You just hop on in there. Let me know that you would like to be a part of the league, and if all goes well, you'll be a part of the league as well as there being some other perks for you for ninety nine cents. That's all it costs to become a member of the channel and you get access to my equalized value charts. Those are a thing that I keep track of during the season. We'll get right to that. But after the season, it's really nice as an overview of how players performed. It takes consistency heavily into account compared to, well, not heavily, but it takes consistency into account more so than the average uh, fantasy football points per uh, week statistic does which i think is a very good one you know better than looking at overall fantasy points scored on a season in terms of ranking how well a player contributed to their fantasy football teams this takes one step further really looks at uh, on a weekly basis where they helping you to win games compared to one another and you can see how well guys did all of last season as if you're doing your own homework it's a little bit of a refresher to to view guys through that lens and during the season, I keep that up to date. You'll get access to that throughout the season as well, that, up to, that chart as it updates each week. And you come week six, seven, eight, when you need to make a trade, you, that might be able to help you make your trade, whether it be avoiding somebody, a bad situation, getting rid of a bad situation that's you know, a little bit looks better than it actually is on your roster or targeting something that is about to break out a little bit more. Uh, on top of that... There's also the uh, the question mark of non PPR, no you know the standard format type of rankings or full PPR rankings. I don't currently have those out there, but if there is demand for it, I can take the time to do that. So there's a channel full PPR and a channel called standard format. Just hop on in there. Let me know that you're interested. All it takes is one person to show that interest, and I will I will get those rankings out for you. And I'm sure there will be some other people that will uh, be thankful of that, as I know that uh, there is some demand for it throughout the regular season uh, with people that come in for my my weekly uh, you know start sit shows. So there we go. That is it for this video. I will see you next week with I think I'm gonna do. I might actually do running backs next week and then quarterbacks because quarterbacks are only going to have two videos and I think we'll start doing some drafting videos uh, at that point in time. Start start hopping on and, and really figuring out how this draft works out and plays out. So there you go. Thank you very much. Peace out.